Did you know that you can easily start a fundraiser on your Facebook page to collect funds for the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute? It's quick and easy and costs you nothing. So whether it's your birthday, anniversary, or you just want to help collect money for one of your favorite charities, follow these easy six steps to get started. Step one, simply navigate to the Foundation and Institute page at facebook.com slash Ronald Reagan. Step two, click on the fundraisers tab underneath the main page photo. Step three, click raise money in the create a fundraiser section. Step four, set up your fundraiser. You can use the default settings or edit to change your goal, fundraiser end date and description. Step five, once you are done editing your fundraiser basics, click create. Your fundraiser is now live and ready to accept donations. Your sixth and final step is to post it to your Facebook feed. Invite your Facebook friends to your fundraiser, make a donation yourself, and or share your fundraiser via email or on other personal pages. All money raised through your fundraiser supports the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute and helps to keep President Reagan's values and principles alive. Your money supports our education programs and college scholarships, our digital and in-person events, our traveling exhibitions, and so much more. Get started today. What do you say about someone who gives your life meaning? What do you say about someone who's always there with support and understanding? Someone who makes sacrifices so that your life will be easier and more successful? Or what you say is that you love that person and treasure her. I, I simply can't imagine the last eight years without Nancy. The presidency wouldn't have been the joy it's been for me without their there beside me. And that second floor living quarters in the White House would have seemed a big and lonely spot without her waiting for me every day at the end of the day. You know, she once said that a president has all kinds of advisors and experts who look after his interest when it comes to foreign policy or the economy or whatever, but no one who looks after the, his needs as a human being. Well, Nancy has done that for me through recuperations and crises. Every president should be so lucky. Remember, we do these on the first Wednesday of every month. Now, unfortunately, this March marks one full year that the Reagan Library has been closed due to the coronavirus pandemic. It's, it's unbelievable. It's not something we ever thought would have happened. Um, but California numbers are dropping dramatically. And we really do hope, I know I say this every month, but we really do hope that in the next few months we'll be able to reopen. So just keep sticking with us and uh, check our website at reaganlibrary.com to see when we might reopen. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe and healthy. But tomorrow, March 4th, marks what would have been the 69th wedding anniversary of President and Mrs. Reagan. So we're going to spend today's live from in their honor to talk about their love story. And as we've been doing the past handful of months, we've been having such a fun time taking questions from you live. So we're going to do that again. So as I'm talking, if you have any questions about Ronald or Nancy Reagan, the Reagan Library, the Reagan Foundation, go ahead and put it in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer those questions. So last month, if you joined us, I came to you from a very special place. I was in Ronald Reagan's private office in the private quarters of the Reagan Library campus. Now, if you recall, um, what I talked about was that when the library was built, they wanted to create a working space for President Reagan, a working space for Mrs. Reagan, and then a joint place to entertain. So we came to you from President Reagan's office. Well, this month, I am coming to you from Mrs. Reagan's office, just one door down from the president's. Now, um, if you did watch last month, you might recall that this area is closed to the public. So even if the Reagan Library was open for touring and you were here to see our museum, this is not an area you would actually see. So it's really special that we're in it. And on the off chance you missed last month's where we were in President Reagan's office and highlighted a handful of the artifacts in there, you can still go see it. Just go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Reagan Foundation and you will find it there. 
So let's talk about the love story. It was fall of 1949. Ronald Reagan was a young actor in Hollywood, and he was also the president of the Screen Actors Guild, or SAG. Uh, Nancy Davis, as she was at that time, uh, was a young actress in Hollywood, and she was getting really concerned because she was being confused with another actress of the exact same name who had ties to communist front groups. And so she was really concerned. She didn't want to be um, in the same, you know, same sentence as that other Nancy Davis. So she called the SAG president, Ronald Reagan, to ask for some advice. And they agreed that they could meet for dinner to discuss the issue and maybe some ways to solve it. Now, what's funny is both of them gave excuses of early calls the next morning that they couldn't be a late night, uh, but they would, they would meet, but that they would have to leave pretty soon after meeting. Well, after that meeting, when they're sitting at dinner, they forgot their little fake plans. They stayed out almost half the night, and within just a few months, they were dating exclusively. On March 4th, 1952, in a really small ceremony to avoid Hollywood press, they got married at the Little Brown Church in the Valley, March 4th, 1952. The only people in attendance were the minister, and then the best man and matron of honor were, to, were a married couple, their friends from Hollywood, William or Bill, uh, William and Artis Holden. Following the ceremony, the newlywed Reagans went back to the Holdens home and they had dinner, they had wedding cake, uh, they took photographs, and then the Reagans drove to Riverside, California for a one night honeymoon. When they woke up the next morning, they drove to Phoenix, Arizona to join the already vacationing Edith and Loyal Davis, which were Mrs. Reagan now, Mrs. Reagan's mother and stepfather, and they finished their honeymoon in Phoenix, Arizona with Mrs. Reagan's parents. So. Um, President Reagan used to often say to Mrs. Reagan um, that God must have thought a lot about him to have given him her. Is that right? I think that's right. <laughs> um, and what's funny about that sentence is that it was a borrowed sentence uh, from one of his movies when he played Grover Cleveland Alexander in the winning team opposite Doris Day. And Mrs. Reagan used to often say that her life didn't begin until she met Ronnie. So we thought what we would do is spend a little bit of time in this office showing you some of the artifacts that tie specifically to the love story. So the first one's really fun. It is um, this framed cartoon. Uh, Ronald Reagan made the cartoon, uh, gifted it to his wife. She had it framed, and this framed uh, version was in the White House with them. And then following their time in the presidency, she had it brought here into these offices here on the Reagan Library campus. And in Ronald Reagan's writing at the bottom, it reads, Dearest wife, a portrait of Jiggs, who was a married man who couldn't begin to be as happy as you've made me. I-T-W-W-W, which means in the whole wide world, by Ronald Reagan. So the second artifact I want to show you today is over here. Um, it's a really special artifact. So I'm actually going to put on gloves so I can pick it up. It's got a really fun story. It was gifted to President and Mrs. Reagan on March 4th, 1983, in anniversary, uh, um, on their 31st anniversary. And it was gifted to them from Her Majesty the Queen and Prince Philip. Uh, the Reagans had the opportunity to be with the Queen and the Prince on board the Royal Yacht Britannia on this day. And um, the Royals um, uh, gave them a wedding anniversary cake to celebrate, gave them this beautiful gift, and then they had toasts. Um, during the toasts, Ronald Reagan joked and said, Nancy, when we got married, I promised you the world, but I don't know how I will, how I will actually ever top this. Now, throughout their lifetime, Ronald Reagan wrote um, Mrs. Reagan over 700 love letters, cards, notes. Um, in fact, on their first anniversary, he wrote her and said, man cannot live without a heart, and you are my heart. Now, the letters um, live in our archives. They don't sit here in, in Mrs. Reagan's office, but we thought it might be fun to share some of them with you. Um, these are actually replicas, which is why I'm able to touch them. And the first one I wanted to share with you is from March 4th. Um, I'm actually going to show you the other one. March 4th, 1967, when Ronald Reagan was governor of California. This was on their 15th wedding anniversary. And I'll just read the opening paragraph, but he wrote, March 4th, 1967, my darling first lady, I'm looking at you as you lie here beside me on this 15th anniversary and wondering why everyone has only just discovered you are the first lady. You've been the first, in fact, the only to me for 15 years. That sounds so strange, 15 years. It still seems like minutes they've gone so swiftly. If I have any regret, it is only for all the days we've been apart and have had to awaken without watching you. 
if all of our husbands or wives could write us letters like that. <laughs> the second one I wanted to share with you is Ronald Reagan had been president of the United States for just a couple of weeks. It was March 4th, 1981. He wrote their 29th anniversary letter on White House letterhead. And I'm not going to read the whole letter. It's quite long. But I'm going to read you the opening and the ending. And it opens with March 4th, 1981. As President of the United States, it is my honor and privilege to cite you for service above and beyond the call of duty, and that you have made one man, me, the most happy man in the world for 29 years. And then the concluding paragraph says, Thank you for all my life and living, and for happiness as complete as one can have on this earth. I love you so much and so much more each day, your husband. So just beautiful. <laughs> um, so those are the letters we wanted to share with you today. Now, if you joined us last month, you'll remember that we shared a handful of items from our museum store that tied into the theme of Ronald Reagan. And we're going to do the same thing today, just share three items from our store um, that continue the love story of Ronald and Nancy Reagan. So during the course of their marriage, and sorry if you're hearing that, our air conditioning is very loud right now. Uh, during the course of their marriage, um, they had many occasions to toast each other, whether it was an anniversary or a birthday or a nice dinner out, or as governor and first lady of California, or as president and first lady of the United States. So in our store, we sell these beautiful Waterford Linsmore toasting flutes so that you too, when you're at home, um, can have these beautiful glasses to toast your special occasion. Um, now to buy any of these items or anything in our store, it's really simple. You just go to reaganlibrary.com slash store and you can search for any of our products. But the three products we're talking about today, if you go to reaganlibrary.com slash store and scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a featured product section. And all three of these items will be in the featured product section uh, for the next few weeks. Uh, the second thing we wanted to share with you today is the 1981 commemorative um, inauguration plate. Um, what makes this so special, I think, for the love story is that it includes Ronald and Nancy Reagan's signatures in 24 karat gold. It is by Lennox, and so it's a really nice way to remember their love story and their connection uh, right there in your home. The last one, and I think which ties most directly to the love story, we mentioned just a minute ago that Ronald Reagan wrote his wife over 700 letters and, and, and notes and cards throughout their lifetime. Um, well, following the presidency, Mrs. Reagan published this book, which is I Love You, Ronnie. And the book is um, some of the letters and cards he wrote her, stories, uh, remembrances, and some great photographs. Again, all three items um, that I just mentioned can be found at reaganlibrary.com store. Simply scroll down to the featured products section and um, they will be listed right there. So really easy to find. Um, so that's the story we wanted to share with you today. Uh, we want to thank you for that. And um, as we do now, we're going to um, look at some of the questions you guys may have asked. So if you haven't already asked a question, you have one, please. Um, right there on the comment section in Facebook, go down, ask the question. I'm going to do the best to answer them. But as I always do, I will put on my glasses so I can read your question because Otherwise, I can't see them. So let me do that really quickly. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> OK. Um, so you just have to give me a second to start scrolling through and see if we have any questions. Um, thank you all for watching. That's what I'm seeing right now. We really do appreciate it. It's great to see all of these names. And some of these names I'm recognizing from previous live from. So we really do appreciate that. Does anyone have any questions? Let me just scroll for a couple more seconds. I'm still in the uh, area watching all the people who are watching us, which again, we so appreciate. Remember, we do do these on the first um, Wednesday of every month, so we'll do the next one in April. Um, Dennis Gleason is asking, when was the last time Nancy visited her office? When was the last time Nancy visited the Reagan Library? Um, so. I want to make sure I get this right. I might be a little bit wrong. Um, prior to President Reagan's passing, Mrs. Reagan didn't come up very often because she stayed by his side. Um, once he passed, between about 2006 and 2011, she came up a lot, um, six, seven, eight times a year. Um, the last time she came up for a big event um, was July of 2011. I believe that's right. We did a big exhibition. We partnered with uh, the Walt Disney Company, and she came up for the grand opening of that. And then we're, I know she used her office for that. And then she also came up. We held presidential debates, a GOP uh, presidential candidate debates in 2007, 2008, and 2012. She came to all of those as well. Um, 
So somewhere around in there, um, she may have come up one or two more times beyond that, but those are the, the distinct memories I have of her here, and sorry if my dates are wrong. Um, can the camera please show us what the full office looks like, Dennis? I'm so sorry, we are no longer in the office, but I think our office, so we're, yes, we are going to, while I'm talking, our cameraman's gonna run back in the office and do a quick pan. I don't know what you guys are seeing because I can't talk to you about any of the items because I can't see them when he's in there because I'm on a delay on my Facebook page. Um, but she did use this often, quite op office quite often. So what would happen is, for example, I mentioned she would come up between 2006 and 2011. We might have a guest speaker. Um, we had Katie Couric, we had Senator Ted Kennedy, we had Paul Ryan, we had um, uh, just we had President Bush, um, and Mrs. Reagan would use her office as a hold, and then that speaker would use President Reagan's office as a hold, and then they would join together in the joint living room. Maybe we'll show that to you in an upcoming month um, for coffee and tea and cookies and just conversation. So I'm hoping you're seeing the rest of the office, um, at least somewhat of it. It's filled with artifacts, photographs, awards, um, uh, needle points. So there's some really fun things in there. Thank you for those questions. Um, Christian's asking, what was Ronald Reagan's favorite color? I don't know. I'm gonna look off screen and see if anyone over there knows. I'm getting a shrug. <laughs> I'm really sorry, I, I don't know that. Mrs. Reagan's was red. I actually thought about wearing red today and I didn't. Um, but I'm not sure what Ronald Reagan's was. Sorry about that. But you know what we can do is we can see if we can find it. If we can find it, we'll respond later in the comments section. But his favorite, his favorite jelly bean flavor was black licorice, so maybe. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Dottie loved these glimpses into the private offices. We're so glad we could share them with you. I guess, you know, if there's any benefits of COVID, this might be it because we never allow cameras up here in the private offices. This was a very private and distinct place for them. Um, some place we wanted them to have privacy and not be in the camera's eyes. But with the museum closed for a year, we've sort of run out of places to show you. So that's why we're up here. So I guess that's one of the benefits. Um, Christian's also asking, what was Ronald Reagan most famous for other than being a president? Um, I can share my thoughts on, on that. Um, I guess everyone would feel differently. Of course, governor of the California, president um, um, of the United States, but as president of the United States, helping to end the Cold War um, without firing a shot, which was Margaret Thatcher's words, uh, working with Mikhail Gorbachev, Margaret Thatcher, the Pope, Brian Mulroney, uh, to bring about the INF Treaty and bring um, uh, the elimination of nuclear weapons, which was pretty remarkable. Of course, the Berlin Wall came down after he was president, but that was because of all of his efforts and all of the efforts of the world leaders helping him at that time would be really important. The sense of American pride back into uh, with Americans, uh, I would think would also be something that was really important that Ronald Reagan did. And going back to in the early 50s when he was president of the Screen Actors Guild, he's at, um, at least when he was president, I think it's still the case, the only U.S. president that was also a president of a labor union. So that's really interesting as well. Um, let's see if we have any other questions before we wrap up. Oh, Dennis, you're welcome. I'm glad that worked out. We can thank our cameraman, Dustin, for that. <laughs> Quick thinking on his feet. Um, Kevin's asking who was Ronald Reagan's heroes or influences. You know, um, I might have to respond to you so that I get it correctly later. I'll go back into this Facebook and I'll, and I'll comment on that. I know he um, uh, admired Churchill, um, but I will go back and make sure that we um, get more information for you on that one. Where did Ronald Reagan propose to Nancy do we know? Um, I think it was Chasen's. Does that sound right? So they used to always date at a restaurant which no longer exists called Chasen's. Um, that was sort of their go-to um, dinner date, and that's where he proposed. Um, and then um, I was going to talk about it a little bit later, but it's a really great tie-in. We have a new monthly video podcast called Reagan and Friends. Our first one was last month. We did it on Frank Sinatra. Our new one this month is on Bill Holden. So if you recall from just a little bit ago, Bill Holden was Ronald Reagan's best man at their wedding. Um, and so it's a really great way to learn a little bit more about the love story, learn about how Ronald Reagan and Bill Holden became friends. It's actually a terrific story, but you also learn more about the wedding. And one of the things we talk about in that podcast is that Ronald Reagan and Bill Holden were in a really boring Hollywood meeting and they are passing notes back and forth to each other. And Ronald Reagan wrote a note to Bill Holden and said, um, um, will you be the best man at my wedding uh, when I marry Nancy? And, and Bill Holden said, absolutely. And the two of them like, got excited, ended up leaving the meeting. So, but I um, don't know the date, but it was at Chasen's. Um, 
Let's see if there's any more questions. Greg is asking what was Ronald Reagan's thoughts about being a private citizen after being president. I don't know exactly what his thoughts were. I can tell you he did really enjoy, as much as he was honored in serving his nation for so long, um, returning back to civilian life and being able to go to Rancho del Cielo whenever he wanted and go horseback riding whenever he wanted was super important to him. He loved doing those things so much. Spending more private time with his wife, Nancy, was so important to him. Um, he did continue to travel for a handful of years, make a lot of big speeches, both locally and internationally, um, which we've talked about in a previous um, live froms. Um, and then he came up to the Reagan Library, I believe, I thought, I believe I heard through December of 99, um, which was his last visit up here. One of his things he used to love to do, actually, was come up to the Reagan Library. And of course, Secret Service knew, but they wouldn't alert the press. So he would come up to the library to surprise guests. He would just roam the halls of the, of the museum as if he was a guest and surprise people and say hello and shake their hand, um, which is kind of fun. Um, Larry's asking about the Reagan Ranch and if it's open to the public. The Reagan Ranch is not owned by the Reagan Foundation. It's owned by YAF, um, Young America's Foundation. I don't know, in pre-COVID, they're actually uh, headquartered in Santa Barbara, and I know they do special Redona retreats to the ranch. During COVID, I'm not sure how it works, but you could look them up again there in Santa Barbara. Um, and I think that's how we'll end. Again, I will um, spend a few minutes when we're done with this going back to my desk, looking to see if anyone else answered questions that I missed, and I will do my best to answer those questions. Um, as always, we thank you so much for joining us. We know you have so many options out there right now of entertainment, <laughs> um, and that you're choosing us and watching uh, with us is something we so appreciate. Um, as we say at the end of each of these, you know, we do four to five podcasts a week, uh, both video and um, audio. So we recommend you subscribe to them at youtube.com slash Reagan Foundation to stay up to date with everything that we're doing. As soon as we know when we can open, we will post that on our website at reaganlibrary.com. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe, safe and healthy. We will see you next month. I think it's all too common in marriages that no matter how much partners love each other, they don't thank each other enough. And I suppose I don't thank Nancy enough for all that she does for me. So Nancy, in front of all your friends here today, let me say thank you for all you do. Thank you for your love. And thank you for just being you. Oh, dear. You get a couple of <laughs>